All right, so we've got six minutes. I'll probably go two minutes over. Let's um, just power through some growing mushrooms indoors. Um, OK, so some options for growing mushrooms indoors. Uh, straw is one of the most accessible ones. You don't need a lab. You can do it outside. Um, supplemented sawdust uh, is kind of like a next step up. You need a lab. You need to be able to expand the mycelium in some sort of sterile way. Um, and then you can also uh, use ready-to-fruit blocks. So instead of building a lab and everything, you can buy the blocks from a, a, um, someone that does that part of the process. Right now, we work with three or four farms in Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York that buy blocks in, in from us. Um, and it can definitely work out economically, especially while you're just starting um, growing, growing the mushrooms. Uh, this is a picture of our second grow room. It's just in a tobacco barn. Uh, this is a concrete floor, and it's a really simple plastic and um, just like contractor plastic structure. Uh, this is our first grow room. Um, again, you can see it's basically just uh, two by fours. These ones were even just stripped in half. We were even on a lower budget. Um, and then just plastic stapled to the inside. Um, so very, very simple. This is in the basement of a residential house. Um, we grew in there for two years and had no issues with structure, human health, anything like that. We did exhaust directly outside. Um, there's four conditions that we were really focusing on while growing mushrooms inside. CO2, lighting, humidity, and temperature. And it's really a dance trying to, com trying to control all of them. Um, so you're always kind of uh, adjusting, changing it. Um, and this is definitely, uh, growing mushrooms indoors is pretty much a daily um, task, maybe every other day. But usually harvesting, monitoring uh, needs to happen almost every, every day. Um, CO2, ideally we want parts per million below 800 CO2. So what does that mean? Generally changing out all the air in the room every 8 to 10 minutes. So just exchanging the air out. Um, that could look like having one fan blowing air in, or maybe two fans, one blowing in, one blowing out, an intake and an and, and exhaust. Um, this is our most recent grow room. We bought uh, a bunch of trailers and two of them now. They're like the 53-foot uh, tractor trailers. Two of them are our grow rooms now. Um, do you need a fan or like, um, filter on that intake? Nope. Yeah, you don't need a, don't need a filter. Um, some people like to use them to keep out bugs, but we're pulling from inside, so it's not a big deal. Uh, humidity, um, ideally somewhere in the like 80 to 90 percent humidity. Um, it's really important to have the, the air humid, but we don't want the mushrooms to get wet. So the mushroom quality goes way, way, way down when the mushrooms start to get soggy and wet. Um, so this is a little bit of a balance of getting the air humid, but the uh, mushrooms staying, staying dry. Um, Can you introduce t uh, humidity into the room? Yeah, if you're doing like a basement. Yeah, we use um, a ultrasonic humidifier. So it's just this uh, little, little like pond fogger basically. Makes, uh, makes a mist and then just uses a fan and blows right into the room. Um, I have like a little budget of like what a room would cost um, in a couple of slides. Um, but there's, f there's four different products that I've used and if you email me I can share those with you. Um, next up's lighting. Uh, lighting, this is a good amount of lighting. You want something you can like read in comfortably, work in comfortably, and all the gourmet mushrooms Everything beyond the button need light for their proper morphology. Um, so the, the concept of keeping it in the dark doesn't apply to a lot of these gourmet mushrooms. They really need light, particularly oysters. Oysters really need light and oxygen. Any specific uh, number of hours per day? Lighting? Yeah. Uh, I do a 16-8. You know, they're not photosynthesizing with that light. So like the spectrum isn't super important and hours not that important. There's definitely, the, we just switched rooms where we're growing oysters and the colors are much more vibrant in this new room that we're growing. Um, so there is impact on the light 
um, on the coloring of the mushrooms with the light, particularly with oysters. With the spectrum of light you're using? Yes. Like a blue light or a warmer, cool light? Yes, exactly. Um, and then shelving, so shelving in the grow room, you know, you can just use these really basic Home Depot, 30 bucks, wire racks are easy, or you can build your own if you're building a, if you're using a bunch of shelving, it's nice to just build your own. Um, this is a little budget for a grow room that can grow, I'm saying 50 pounds a week here. Um, if it was a good system, you could easily be growing 100 pounds. This would be an 8 by 16 foot room. Um, in total, Right, looking at somewhere around $705 to set up this room. And then the capacity to grow, say it's 100 pounds a week, you know, uh, wholesale price is somewhere in the $8 to $10 uh, at this quantity, $8 to $10. So that's about $1,000 a week you could be getting out of this, uh, you know, beginning $700 investment. So it's a, um, it's a, it's a market that's growing a lot right now. And this is where I was, I'm thinking is it has a lot of value in diversified farms because it's a high value crop that likely you can sell to the same channels that you're selling to now. Um, and yeah, it's not like extra marketing or anything. Um, and, and probably use unused space, right? Basements, barns, those sorts of things. Okay. Yeah, and then this is, uh, so we're going into like a couple of the systems. Um, these are the ready to fruit blocks. Usually you can get like six, seven different species. Um, typically, most of the companies I know selling them are selling them for five bucks uh, a pop. And they usually fruit around a pound to 1.5 pounds. Um, a lot of them have minimums of like getting like 50 or 100 blocks or something like that. So it's definitely on, on to the like commercial realm. Of, uh, of fruiting, but it's a nice, nice way to kind of take out the whole lab sterilization process and just focus on fruiting and selling uh, the mushrooms. And they grow outdoors? Yeah, they can grow outdoors. Yeah, we were working with a grower that was growing in uh, three low tunnels, shiitakes primarily. Oysters outside tend to get some bugs in them. Um, lion's mane are good outside as well. I think the yellow oysters are pretty good outside, like they don't get bugs in them. So yeah, you can grow them uh, outside April to November. Yeah. Yeah, and this was just like, it was like a low, low tunnel. It was a low tunnel and then just like a misting line on the top. And it was just like, wow, that, yeah, that was probably like 100 bucks or something. And she was growing, she was growing like 200 pounds a week. It was, yeah, it was really cool. She just got a, a warehouse. Um, we're two, we're two minutes over. I said I'd like stop at two minutes over, so I'll just stop there. Growing on straw is a, is a great way. You can do the whole process uh, at home pretty easily. They're like sterilization, inoculation, incubation, and fruiting. There's a booklet on our website, fungially.com, that goes through the different steps of growing on straw and different methods of uh, treatment. So grow lots of mushrooms, eat lots of mushrooms, embrace the fungi. Thank you.